Online! Now, it is Lordo's deep dive before we hear from the great man. Did you notice, Nathan, Lordo just a little we'll tell nervous you what, this he's morning? He's nervous, isn't he? Did you notice what when he came? a special guest in, he's very nervous. <laughs> he's sitting around. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, all, he's sort of saying. up at the screen. Yeah. You know, oh, he's you all... do this, Kane, I'll give you one. Yeah, yeah. And he's gone, don't say anything that's going to sort of upset nervous. him or anything. So. Well, it is football royalty. Yeah. It's football royalty that we've got here with us this morning. It's given us great pleasure uh, on the Sunday footy show to be well, uh, joined by the great Lee Matthews. Lee, thanks yeah. for joining us on the Sunday footy show. Uh, good morning, all. Good uh, to be with you. It's a real thrill. And it, with, so I'll get it, the embarrassment out of the way first. I just want to put up your resume first because there's oh. none greater in the game. You are the greatest of all time, you know, across all peers. So let's get up Lee Matthews' resume, and it is something to behold. His playing record, obviously, four premierships, uh, eight. Best and fairest, that's a Peter Crimmins medal. A Hawthorne team of the centuries. Obviously a Hall of Fame inaugural Brown legend line. as well. Um, obviously 461 games coached, four premierships and the Hall of Fame at both Brisbane and Collingwood, TJ. Mm. It's, it's an amazing... Well, as you say, it's, uh, it's unrivaled. Yeah, it's unrivaled. I don't think anyone else... Lee, before um, we get into the, uh, the tin tax of all this, um, can I ask, if you, if you take out of the equation that you've been on the Brisbane board for about seven years, I think you said, on AW yesterday, so you've got associations yes. with Hawthorne, obviously, Collingwood and Brisbane, and been successful at all clubs, and I'm sure you're asked this question all the time. Where do your loyalties lie? <laughs> Oh, loyalties are whoever I'm serving at the time, to be honest. That's, that's the way it works out. If, as footy fans who love their footy club, clearly uh, being so heavily involved with three clubs and split your allegiances, the club you played for, Hawthorne, is probably the one you feel the most associated with long-term because, you know, you've been out there in the middle with the brown and gold. Mm. Mm. Lee, what about you? You've been involved in so many premierships as a player and a coach. Is there one that just grabs you more than the other, as, whether it's be as a player or a coach, or they're all just, you know, the euphoric feeling, of, they all level out amongst yeah. all of them. Well, it's a bit like saying, who, which mm. one of your kids do you love the most, isn't it? Because you don't have that many of them. I've, I've been lucky to be involved in the, in the, eight, uh, the eight premierships, uh, so it's not as if they're happening every, uh, every second week. Uh, probably the first one way back in 71 we won by seven points against Essen and that I was probably only third year 19 year old so that was that went down to the uh, siren being lucky enough to be captain in 83 that that's a big big moment if you're a player to go and accept the premiership cup and probably the the Collingwood premiership in 1990 because it tended to break the drought and just the uh, the post Post-match euphoria with the tens of thousands of uh, Collingwood uh, supporters. That, that was a really special moment. Let's go back to the early days, Lethal. Grew up in Frankston and Chelsea played footy there, senior footy. Mm. Came to Hawthorne in 1969. This is number 32. Can you remember much about this, mate? <laughs> Only that it's black and white TV. I remember that. That's how long ago it was. Uh, yeah, well, that was when the whole of Victoria was zoned yeah. and uh, the Mornington Peninsula area was zoned to Hawthorne, so that's why I went to... Hawthorne and uh, and uh, so that's where you can be really lucky in football because the Hawthorne Football Club Peter Knights came yeah. the same year as I did, the same age as uh, as, as I am. So uh, so many <laughs> good players, good organisation behind the scenes. So I was very lucky to get zoned to Hawthorne, and we had a lot of success there. Mm. Lee, you want to take a look at some of your highlights and just going through the numbers. The 1977 season is probably the best individual season we've ever seen. So you average 27 disposals and 3.8 goals a game. In, in terms of your enjoyment, we, we know how many goals you kicked, 9-15. Where, where did you love playing most of your footy? Was it forward? Well, I might joke, with the wind, I like playing forward, and uh, against the wind, I'd play on ball and go into defence a little bit. No, I, I always felt I was a forward-half player. I didn't go into the back 50 a whole lot. There wasn't the 50-metre line back uh, back then, of course, but I uh, I very really, I was a very poor defensive midfielder, put it that way. <laughs> Lee, before we show this next highlight, um, I remember Lou Richards telling a story once that he was speaking with your mum, uh, who <laughs> yeah. let him know in no uncertain terms that she didn't like the nickname Lethal. <laughs> and he said, Mrs Matthews, that's going to make your son a lot of money one day. <laughs> um, is that true? Yep. That is a true story, yeah, that, uh, that, that conversation took place. Well, as we know, back when Lou Richards was riding in the Herald Sun and giving nicknames, Bruce Dool was the flop, became the flying doormat and Mick Nolan the galloping gasometer. <laughs> and he coined the lethal Lee for me, early 70s probably, and uh, it's, certainly it's, uh, it's stuck. Did you like it? I mean, I know that you... I think it was Mike Sheen that wrote it with you. It's called Lethal. So, yeah. did you like it? Yeah. 
Well, I've never. Well, yeah. To be honest, it didn't. It didn't really concern me. To be honest, I didn't take it as an insult. For instance, you know, mm. I, I, that was so. Uh, uh, yeah, no, there was no, there was no negatives. Mum must have thought it was a little bit of a. Um, uh, it was emphasising, I guess, the uh, aggressive <laughs> and violent nature of my. Uh, of my footy. I guess why, why mum didn't like it that much. Well, this emphasised the toughness of your footy as well back in 1982 where, we'll listen to the commentary as well, where Lou gave you another nickname for the day. <laughs> She's in it and broke the point, folks. Oh, talk about a he-man. How was that? He split it right down in half. <laughs> what do you remember of that, Lou? <laughs> Well, I remember actually uh, backing into the point post. I seriously don't think I hit it that hard, to be honest. I know I stepped on the boundary umpire's foot. I remember that because he was jumping up and down because he, <laughs> I'd hurt his foot. And to be honest, I didn't even know that I'd done it at the time. It wasn't until the post-game um, uh, that, that I realised that, in fact, the, uh, the point post had just snapped at the top joint. So... Yeah, good image building stuff, but I don't think it was nearly <laughs> quite as, uh, as he-man as it was made out to be. Yeah. Lee, Lee, you were able to contribute right through to the end of the, the 332 games you played. You kicked 70-plus uh, goals in 82, 83, 84. Then the last game for you came at the, the grand final moment of 85. And the emotions, as, as we can see you chaired off the, the crowd, when was it you knew that that mo moment was inevitable? And, and, and even at that stage, Lee, did you know you were going to go into coaching? Uh, well, about halfway through that 1985, I knew that my time was just about up, so it would be my last year, and I suggested that to Alan Junes, and he didn't try and change my mind, so that, was, <laughs> that happened. Uh, but I, I think I, it's not, the coaching came when I couldn't play any longer, so I, I wasn't really planning to coach. But, I mean, the thing was, the Saturday morning of the grand final, you're still a footballer, and then, you know, four hours later, at the end of the game, we lost the game badly, so that heightens the... Uh, negative emotions, I suppose, but uh, basically that's the end of it. You're, you're not a footballer, you're, you're another ex-footballer all of a sudden, uh, and uh, that part of your life, which all professional sports people, elite sports people, mostly you finish your sporting career at a very young part of your life, but really that that part of your life is, is so much defined you, and I did use, I've used the term, it's like part of your dies, the part that's inside the white line, you don't need that part uh, except for that physical combat in the middle of the footy field. So that part of your dies. Lee, can you tell us about how you become the senior coach at Collingwood? Because it all was thrust upon you pretty quickly one season, wasn't it? Mm. Yes, it was. I, uh, late in 1985, I was approached uh, by Collingwood to become assistant coach <coughs> to Bob Rose. Uh, and take over at the end of 1986. And Bob Rose was part of that, uh, that discussion. Uh, but after round three of 1986, so I'd been at the... And it was still part-time footy then. You only trained Tuesday, Thursday night. And I was a full-time assistant and Bob was still working a, a, normal, a normal job. So I'm still not sure what an assistant coach was supposed to do in that era. But anyway, after round three of 1986, we lost the first three games. There were, the club was virtually bankrupt. There was a lot of... Uh, problems at Collingwood and one Sunday morning after that third loss I still remember the words and the phone rang about 7.30 it was Bob Rose on the other end of the phone he said Lee I think it's time you took over Jeez. Uh, and that was how it all uh, that was how it all started and those for with the long memories it was amazing after round three of 1986 at Collingwood new chairman new CEO new football manager and new senior coach Jeez. so all those positions changed hands at uh, after round three of 1986 so it was a fair bit of upheaval at the Pies at the time. And, of course, four years later, you touched on a little earlier, uh, uh, you know, the oh. end of that long, frustrating, horrible drought that was Collingwood's premiership. I mean, that I, I suppose I'm a little bit biased, Lee, in that I do support Collingwood, and at the time, it was just, there you are, walking down on the boundary at the moment. And, uh, you know, Nothing. it was such a, a great occasion. You know, Alan McAllister was... Uh, McAllister, I guess, was the first of the presidents to be larger than life. Uh, uh, Ronnie Richards, his left-hand, you know, sort of man, and there's Alan McAllister there. It was amazing times, wasn't it? Well, it was. I mean, yeah, we found our way through. We, we, we got up towards the, you know, the top group in 88, 89, but lost the, the finals those two years. Uh, so uh, getting that draw in the first uh, final against the Eagles uh, um, was the first final, I guess, for that group where we didn't lose. It was a draw, so we, we, we went again and then... Really, the team produced uh, out, an outstanding level for the next three weeks, really, uh, to beat the Eagles in the replay, then Essendon in the second semi, and Essendon in the grand final. And won all those three games quite easily. And uh, 
That's that. That's how you win premierships. To be honest, you've got to get up there, but then you've got to play really well in that last two or three weeks of the season, and that's what the Collingwood team did in 1990, magnificently led by Tony Shaw. So it was uh, exciting moments. You, you tend to not uh, be part of what the footy fans and what the Collingwood supporter base are thinking when you go into the game, but once the game is over and you've won it then that euphoria that spreads around the ground, the Collingwood, Collingwood, mm. Collingwood chant, that's when you, know, you can actually just release the shackles and enjoy, mm. enjoy the moment with the, uh, with the fans. All right, and of course there were three other occasions oh. you could do just that, a little north of the border though, and uh, we'll revisit that. Can you hang around and join us after the break still, Luke? Sure. All right, and no, Billy, you're no not problems. showing it. You're not showing it. What? You're not showing that incident. No. No. I want to... That no, <laughs> no. The one in the stand. No. You're not doing it. <laughs> Lee, Lee, we'll do our best to make yeah. sure he doesn't show this particular bit of footage. I think I you might know it. which one it is. But anyway, we'll take a break. The great Lee Matthews to uh, rejoin us right after this. A bit of history here. Lee Matthews has been to the top of the mountain for a second time as coach. Brisbane have won the Premiership. Yeah, Robert, what a superstar it was. Out of it. He, lethal's my guess, so oh, this is my time. But the okay. stand, when he was in the stand. No, no, no. no, 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 no Lee, no, hey, Lee no. Uh, welcome back again. For the, <laughs> thanks for sticking with us. Now we want to get on to your Brisbane time. How did you change as a coach from Collingwood to Brisbane? I want to just show a piece of classic vision of you from the box about Jason Ackermanis back in 2002. You there? Go and tell Acker, run to the front of Lynchy. Run to the front, not to the back. Back to Brad Scott, around the corner, to the full forward area. Lynch can't manufacture a mark. Ackermanis, left foot snap. Ackermanis has kicked a goal. Wasn't that tough play all round, and eventually it went forward. The contest from Lynch again, he's done it all day. The kick went right. Ackermanis, who really can't kick on his right foot. Right foot has kicked it on his left, as we know. There's wonderful skills. He struggled, you would think, with a bit of injury. Oh, but I, Lee, what I love about that is nothing complicated about it, but every Acker knew exactly what you wanted from him. Do you think the game's got too complicated? Did you keep it simple for your players? I should come clean on that one. It was Gary O'Donnell, who, yeah. our assistant coach, who came up with that observation. All I did was deliver it over the phone. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I've got to give yeah. Gary our credit for that. Ah, well, I mean, you make observations from the coach's box and then, uh, and then you sort of might send out a reminder. And that was a specific reminder, I suppose, every now and again. Something like that happens, and the, and the situation of, you know, happened five minutes later, and uh, and we can sort of go back and say it was, of course, the measure. But I'm sure Acker was becoming aware of that. But I, I think coaching changed. If I uh, if I can say what changed the most from the Collingwood era going into the Lions era is be positive. I mean, keep, keep being positive, help players believe in themselves. I was a bit of a yellow and scream in the Collingwood days. I, I think. Um, so I, uh, I felt if there was one change, it was that be positive. You've got to make players, help players believe in themselves. Hey, Lee, you led a certain way and you had a captain at Brisbane who led a very similar way, Michael Voss. 2002 grand final. We're going to see some footage here of just how courageous he was and what he set up. I mean, he was just a beast of a player. Big clash with Scotty Burns. Gets up, gets it out to the black. And he was just a wonderful leader of your football club. He was. He was physically strong and he was mentally strong, and that uh, so he uh, he could take the punishment and bounce straight back up. And that was a good example with that uh, hit from Scott Burns. But he, he would he he would use his body as a battering ram. But I don't think Vossi ever got reported, so he never stepped over the line of doing anything uh, illegal. But geez, he tacked the ball so hard. Now he was a. I was so lucky with Tony Shaw as a great captain in my, most of my time at Collingwood and Michael Voss, of course, was just an icon at, uh, as a captain, as a leader, as a player at the Brisbane Lions. OK, Lee. No. No, 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 no. I've got some vision for you, mate. I just want you to have a look at this vision and <laughs> tell us what's going on here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, what For, a... <laughs> fortunately, Billy, fortunately, I can't see the vision, but I almost... I know what the vision probably is. All I can do is plead temporary insanity. <laughs> because uh, I... 
I had been at Geelong coaching that afternoon and we'd driven up to watch the game that night at uh, Marvel Stadium and I don't know if I went to sleep, but I certainly looked like I was going to sleep. <laughs> well, Lee, at least you can plead only temporary insanity as opposed to Bill, who's pretty much full-time, <laughs> I've got to say. <laughs>